Topping today's news, over 100 employees to lose their jobs in Grand Bahama. We hear more from the police commissioner following Monday's press conference on recent crimes. And we hear from the National Baptist Convention on crimes as well. Good evening, Bahamas. I'm Jerino Saunders. This is your JCN Evening News. It is a pleasure to have you join us. As of January 12th, roughly 100 Bahamians will have to begin looking for a new job after Grand Bahama-based pharmaceutical company Pharmachem announced Monday that it will cease operations beginning this Friday. In the company's statement, Pharmachem revealed that after 20 years of servicing both local and global markets, unprecedented challenges have significantly impacted the company's ability to sustain operations despite best efforts and dedication of the team at Pharmachem and the support of customers and lenders. The company says it will file a petition for a formal liquidation process following requirements under the Bahamian law. The company says all staff members will also be awarded respectable severance packages. Meanwhile, in a statement released by the Ministry of Grand Bahama in response to the Pharmachem announcement, the ministry said the government was informed previously of the heartbreaking decision. However, they reassured Pharmachem's Bahamian employees that through the Department of Labor, the government will work closely with them on potential employment opportunities, retraining, and counseling. Those interested can contact Howard Thompson, Director of Labor, who will spare ahead the exercise. In the wake of Pharmachem announcing their sudden closure, leader of the official opposition, Free National Movement, Michael Pintard, poses several questions as it relates to the government's handling of this news. It is important that the government, the Chamber of Commerce, the Grand Bahama Port Authority, all of us send a clear message that Grand Bahama, in general, Freeport in particular, remains a location that is suitable for international and domestic investment. In this regard, we fully expect to hear from the government at this time when so many families would be deeply hurt, disappointed, and uncertain about their future due to this closure. Certainly one of the questions we must ask is whether or not the government was notified in a timely fashion and at what point, and what did they do directly through the Ministry of Grand Bahama or otherwise to soften the blow that was coming. It is also important to know whether or not the Ministry of Labor was properly and in a timely fashion briefed and was involved to ensure that all of the workers' rights were respected and all of what is due to them, they are, in fact, receiving. Again, the Ministry of Grand Bahama on Monday offered Pharmachem's Bahamian employees assistance in finding new jobs and training through the Department of Labor. Mr. Pintard says Grand Bahama needs urgent and vital investments. Grand Bahama has been having an extremely difficult time rebounding post uh, Dorian as well as COVID. The community has been struck by a number of high profile business closures. And just recently, Pharmacam has announced its intention to close its doors and now more than 120 families will directly be impacted by the closure of this important member of our industrial community. But even more so, many subcontractors and business persons who relied on this company directly and its employees indirectly will suffer a serious blow. Mr. Pintard called on the government to take steps to ensure that potential local and foreign investors understand that it is not due to conditions and decisions by the government that contributed to Pharmachem's closure. More from Monday's press conference by Commissioner of Police Clayton Fernando, who also shared his views on the crime situation and the legal system that supports law enforcement agencies. Commissioner Fernando continues to advocate for a stronger judiciary and stiffer penalties to help reduce serious crimes, especially by those out on bail for murder. As an example of their frustrations with some aspects of the judiciary, Commissioner Fernando shared details on a 16-year-old boy 
who is on bail despite being charged in connection with four murders. It has to be some deterrent. The criminals are not feeling the full arm of the law. Some of them who can take in and out the revolving door, they will tell you, man, three years, I could stand up in prison for three years. They take the system for a joke. And I believe it's high time that that is addressed. The third challenge with respect to the movements of these matters, the swift justice, as we always say, justice delayed, justice denied. And that's where you find that the individuals take law into their own hands. Commissioner Fernanda also spoke about the challenges being presented when bail is not revoked for second time offenders. We are talking about high solvency rate. So what that tells you, there's a number of matters that are before the courts. And I'm going to stay in my lane, and that's what we are talking about. Every stakeholder coming to the table to address whatever challenges. And we, the Royal Bahamas Police Force, will do our part. Whatever is needed, you have to come to the table. Whatever the challenges around, we have to fix it and fix it now because we are losing a whole generation. And in those, in, in the, in the uh, losing of our generation, innocent people are getting killed. Innocent people are getting killed. The police commissioner says his team of officers are disrupting gangs where possible, but the law has to change to keep those repeat offenders of serious crimes incarcerated. Also from the police press conference on Monday, highlighting the violent crimes that transpired over the first eight days of the year, Commissioner of Police Clayton Fernandez says, hardened criminals, some of them have no respect for law and authority. The penalty for these serious crimes are not the punishment is not fitting the crime. An example, an individual is caught with a firearm today, charged, convicted, and he's sentenced for three to four years in prison. Three to four years in prison. A second individual is arrested for possession of 10 firearms five being high-powered rifle and the sentence for three years something is wrong with that and that is just one example as I indicated that the punishment is not fitting the crime. Commissioner Fernando lamented the fact that innocent people are being affected by the release of reoccurring offenders. If they breach their bail, why get bailed again? And that's why I say we have to come together to address it. Initially, if you get bail, the condition is that you have to do certain things. You will get your instructions. If you breach that, then you should not get bail again. If he's put back before the court, that should automatically be revoked. But Commissioner Fernandez says it is time that laws are changed to address the current challenges of today. And finally, in this segment, the new Minister of Housing and Urban Renewal, Keith Bell, recently conducted a fact-finding tour of the new Renaissance subdivision on West Carmichael Road. The purpose of the tour was to assess the construction progress of that subdivision. You can see photos of the minister touring the site. Renaissance is a 70-acre development. When completed, it will feature 365 homes with 200 homes to be completed in the first phase. The project, originally known as Carmichael Village, was conceived in 2007. Despite 15 years of starts and stops, it is now set for a quick pace completion. Infrastructure, including roads, electricity, water, and sewer has been completed for phase one. We'll take a break here. We'll be right back after these commercials.